Good morning, hope you're well. Despite all this snow, I'm still waiting on the resort to open, but it does give me time to answer this question. Do you need a wide snowboard? <laughs> so gone are the days where you'd walk into a snowboard shop and pick your board size by finding a board that comes up to about this height on you. So whilst board length is important, finding a board with the right waist width is equally, if not more important. So why might you need a wide board? Well, your riding style and what you want to get from that board is one reason, but more importantly, and somewhat unavoidably, simply has to do with your shoe size. And if you're like me, you've got big feet, then you're gonna need a wide board. And the reason why is because you don't wanna get toe or heel drag. So if you take a look down here at my board, see I've got one foot in the binding. Now my toes, are hanging out over the edge a little bit, but really not much at all. And my heels are about the same around the back. So toe and heel drag occur if your toes are too far over the front of the board. At the minute, I'm on a flat base, it's never gonna happen. But as soon as I start riding, as soon as I'm carving, as soon as I'm on a steeper slope, my board is gonna be tilted onto an edge angle like this. The more I tilt my board onto that edge angle, the closer my boots come towards the snow. So you need to have a board sufficiently wide enough that when you put that board on an edge angle, you're not gonna have your boots touching in the snow. So I'll just give you a quick example here. Just chuck my board away. I'm just gonna put my foot in my girlfriend's board. So obviously this one is a lot thinner than mine. Okay. So my feet don't really fit in the bindings, but you get an idea here. If we look at the side, this board is clearly way too thin for me. My toes are hanging well over the edge of the board. As soon as that board tilts onto its edge, my boots are really gonna dig into the snow. Okay, so what happens when your boots dig into the snow? It's called booting out. And basically, as your boots dig in the snow, it lifts your edge away from the snow, the edge is what gives you grip, you lose contact with the snow, and you're gonna slide out. This has nothing to do with your ability, it's simply because your board is too narrow. So if the likelihood of booting out occurs when your board is at more of an edge angle, that normally happens in two situations. Number one, when you're carving really hard, cranking around those tight carved turns. Or number two, when you're on a steeper slope. So this is a slope, and this is my board. I'm not doing anything with my board, but as the slope angle increases, you see the edge angle increases as well. That's gonna bring your boots closer to the snow. If your board's too narrow here, the boots are gonna to touch the snow and you're gonna boot out. If the benefits of having a wide board are that you can carve harder and ride steeper slopes, then what are the negatives? Well, you've probably watched some other YouTube videos where someone's told you that a wider board requires more effort to turn and they can be a little bit sluggish edge to edge. The reason is a narrow board, it's quite easy to roll across the board onto your heel and onto your toe edge. There's more distance between the edges on a wide board. It takes a bit more work to rock it from one edge to the other. Now, I said it only takes a bit more work and that's where I put the emphasis. If you're a strong rider with good technique, I would say you're really gonna not notice that extra little bit of work it takes to rock your board from one edge to the other. And the advantages of having a wide board, or the advantages of having a board that is wide enough for you, where you don't have any toe or heel overhang, are far gonna outweigh the negatives where you have a board that is too narrow for you. It's gonna cause you a lot of problems. So here's kind of my advice. Yeah, if you're a beginner, getting a super wide board might not be the best idea, because you know, at that stage in your snowboarding, you're not gonna have the best technique and you might find it a bit more tricky to turn a wider board as you're starting to learn your turns. But once you're a strong rider with good technique, then as I said, yeah, you really wanna make sure your board is wide enough for you. And now to all those people that tell you, oh, a wide board, it's really sluggish edge to edge. It takes lots of effort to turn. I would kind of say, yeah, that does ring true for beginners, but for good riders, no, I wouldn't really agree with that. Let's just look at Ryan Napton for an, in, for an instance. So I'm sure you've probably seen his YouTube videos. If you haven't, I'll put a link in the description down below. 
Now, is he slow edge to edge? Is he sluggish through his turns? No, it's because he's a really strong rider, okay? And he's got his own custom board. It's one of the widest boards I've ever seen. Okay, so if you haven't, check him out, and that's my point proved. Now let's bring us back to some numbers so you can get a board that has exactly the right waist width for you. So if you're in a snowboard shop, the back of the board here will have a big sticker on it with a table with a load of numbers on it. You know, have things like your board length, your side cut radius, but what we're looking at right now is the waist width of the board. If you're looking online, you'll be able to click on the spec sheet button. This will bring up the same table. So the waist width will typically be a value between about 240 to 270. We're talking about millimeters here. So 24 centimeters to 27 centimeters. So that's it, only 30 millimeters, three centimeters basically denotes the whole spectrum from what you would consider a narrow board to a really wide board. So my board here, this is at the top end of that spectrum. This is 27 centimeters wide across the narrowest point here, 270 millimeters. So if we start at the bottom, 240 to around 245 millimeters. This is where you're gonna find some women's boards and some of the smallest sizes of some men's boards as well. And I would say this is good up to about size UK six feet. Okay, I'm gonna put all these numbers in the comments down below as well, in the description down below, sorry, so that you can have a look at them afterwards as well and I'll convert it to US sizes there too. But for now, I'm talking about UK sizes. So as we move up from 245 to about 255 on the waist width, we're getting into where you're gonna find basically the bulk of your boards. About 80% of all boards kind of live in this area here. And I would say here, you can go up to about size UK nine here. So if you've got bigger than UK nine feet, immediately that's most boards have been ruled out for you. Okay, they're just gonna to be too thin. Your toes, your heels are gonna be hanging over the edge and it's gonna cause you some problems. So as we move from 255 up to around 265, this is where we can get to kind of UK 11 size. Now, these are the boards that most brands are gonna have marked down as their wide versions of a board. So they might make a regular board, for instance, Salomon make the Huck Knife, but they also make a Huck Knife wide. It's exactly the same board, comes in the same sizes, but it just has a wider waist width. Now these wide boards, as I say, good up to about your UK size 11. So some of you obviously are gonna have even bigger feet than that. You're gonna have to really search out these super wide boards. And you do get some that are about 270 millimeters wide. This for instance is one of those boards. So you'll notice that this is actually a bit wider than what I need for my feet. It's 270 millimeters and I've got size UK 11 feet. But that's because you know I really appreciate the benefits of having that wide board. Like I mentioned before, I don't want any toe or heel overhang. I want to be able to do those Euro calves. I want to be able to ride those steep slopes. Okay, so as I say, take a look at those numbers down in the description below and figure out what bracket you fall into. And then when you're looking at boards, you can make sure you get one that is the right width for you. I'll just run you through a couple of other things that can help to make a difference if you do have big feet and you're struggling to find a board that's the right size for you. So a big one for me is boots. You wanna try and get boots that have what's called a reduced footprint. This is whereby they don't have too much extra material on the heel and on the toe. Therefore the boot is shorter than another boot, which could be the same size inside, but is actually shorter in its length. So I once had some Salomon boots and they're about two centimeters or so longer than some Burton boots of the same size. Now this was about six years ago, so they might have improved that now, but because of that, I've just been on Burton boots ever since. They are good at having this reduced footprint and the boots really don't take up too much space across your board. Number two is your stance angles. Now this is just something to think about and something you probably don't want to actually fiddle with too much. You don't want to start changing your stance angles just because you've got big feet. But you can see my feet are turned out. The more they're turned out, the less space they're taking up across the board. You know, if you've got quite a neutral back foot, it's going to come across the board a little bit more, take a bit more room. So that's just something you need to think about. Then of course with that goes your stance width. The wider you stand, you'll be further out towards the wider part of the board. Therefore, you're less likely to have your toes and your heels overhanging. Now, I hope this video is gonna help you when you're picking the right board. And remember these numbers I've given you, it's just kind of a recommendation, a guide based upon my experience. The best bet is if you can actually demo a board for yourself, really get a feel for it, 
you know, and you'll be able to see there if you have any toe drag, any heel drag. If you can't do that, at least try and get your boots on and get down a snowboard store and you can actually physically stand on the board and you'll be able to kind of look down and see if you ever have any overhang at all. Okay, now just as one final point, I just want to kind of touch upon volume shifted boards. These are these boards where you ride them at a shorter length and because you're riding them at a shorter length, they've kept the surface area of the board by increasing the waist width. So they kind of tout these as having a whole host of benefits. The idea is that because they're shorter, they're more nimble to turn, they have the same surface area as a larger board, therefore they float the same as a larger board in powder. Now, that theory I'd say is about 80% true, okay? But the relevant thing for us here is there's a whole host of new boards on the market that have this really wide waist width. So they're a different kind of board, but also if you do have big feet, you've suddenly got a load more boards to choose from. You know, it's something that really appealed for me, and it's a board that I'm actually on. So the Ride War Pig here, this is one of these volume shifted boards. It's much shorter than what I would normally ride. It's only a 154. Previously, I'd always been searching for those 160s, 161 boards with that wide waist, but now I'm able to ride a shorter board, but it has a much wider waist than any wide board I've been riding before. So other similar boards include it's a little bit more directional, but you've got the Capital Slush Slasher. You also have the K2 Party Platter. That's a bit more similar to this. And K2 actually have a whole range of these volume shifted boards. So if you do have big feet, I'd really have a look at their line. All right, so thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, just drop a comment in the, in the, uh, in the comments, I guess. Drop a comment in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. It's a bit of a minefield out there sometimes trying to find the right board for you. It's something that I've been doing for years. And the wide board issue is really an important one for me. If you have a big, if you have big feet, it's gonna be an important one for you. Okay, so as always, please hit that like button, that subscribe button, it's up there somewhere as well. Okay, and let me know what boards you choose and how you get on with them. Cheers guys.